As a counselling psychologist in training, you're probably not surprised that I believe in the great power of therapy. I believe that therapy can be hugely impactful for anybody who considers undertaking it, regardless of what position people find themselves in their lives. What I do believe in though is that clients get experience and contact with fully qualified and accredited therapists. And in today's therapeutic world, it's becoming easier and easier for unqualified and uncredited therapists to actually work as therapists or counsellors and see private clients. Guys, welcome to another week's episode of Get Psyched. And this week we're going to be taking a look at unqualified and unaccredited therapists, how to spot them and actually some of the dangers that can come as a result. So the first question you may actually be asking is why is this an issue in the first place? Well, the truth is, is that there actually are a number of unqualified therapists out there and a lot more than you actually might appreciate in the first place. The term therapist, psychotherapist, counsellor and even psychologist are not protected titles, which basically means that anybody can start a website and call themselves using that title and start seeing private clients. So you can already start to see that there are some real ethical and difficult issues around this area. You know, if somebody can just start a website, you know, anybody watching this video actually, anybody in general can just start a website, call themselves a therapist, counselor, psychotherapist, and yes, even a psychologist and start charging to see private clients. Now, a requirement of my course is that I undertake 40 hours of personal therapy myself, just to kind of get an understanding of what it's like to be a client and also to understand that kind of reflective practitioner element to my counselling psychology training. Now, like any other private client, one of the things I had to do was I had to seek out therapists. I contacted a number of different therapists in the Central Belt of Scotland, trying to see some, some private therapists looking for a couple of sessions here and there. And I got in touch with two separate therapists, both of whom went through accreditation processes with the university and it came back that they actually had no accreditation whatsoever. These two therapists were totally unqualified. They hadn't done any training in therapy. They hadn't done any training in psychology and they were starting up websites and charging to see private clients. Now, I was fortunate because the university took this on themselves because they had to check that the therapists that we're seeing for private therapy are accredited therapists. So they were able to be pretty scrupulous and look at the accreditation process of these people and found that they weren't accredited at all. You can imagine if I was a private client just looking for therapy in general, I could easily fall for seeing a therapist that wasn't qualified. There are also a number of other issues that lead to the development of unaccredited and unqualified therapists gaining more traction today. An overstretched National Health Service in the United Kingdom has meant that more and more people are seeking out private therapy. Often what happens with this is that they actually seek out that therapy online through organizations who themselves hire unaccredited and unqualified therapists. Now, organizations sometimes hire these unqualified and unaccredited therapists because it's cheaper and because it saves them time. But there's also something to be said here about the individuals themselves taking advantage of this. The truth is, is that due to a stretched health service, due to increased awareness of mental health and also the increased prevalence of mental health that people in society are experiencing today, or mental health challenges, I should say rather, people who are trying to take advantage of this unqualified nature of therapy are taking advantage of these clients. They're starting up websites, they aren't fully qualified, they're not accredited, and they're starting to see private clients. There's also another issue around this. You know, if your therapist is not fully qualified, has not gone through a lot of training or is not accredited yet, then the actual practices that they utilize in therapy might not just only be ineffective, but they actually might be quite dangerous. If a therapist doesn't have a full understanding about the mode of therapy or the approach of therapy in which they're using, then it's really not gonna be as effective as a qualified therapist. One of the key parts of at least the counseling psychologist training is that we're utilizing effective um, evidence-based approaches in therapy. We know about cognitive behavioral therapy, person-centered therapy, all different kinds of other therapies as well. And we know what works for certain issues and we know what doesn't work. You wanna make sure that your therapist has that understanding and if they don't, you wanna kinda of question whether or not they're fully qualified. So I think then this kind of raises a question, you know, who is okay to see as a therapist and who isn't? Now, we've got to be super careful about blanket terming this because it can be a bit of a grey area, but there are, of course, therapists that you can see. The first kind of therapist that you can see is one that's accredited by a governing body, and I'm going to go into a little bit of detail in a minute about those governing body, bodies and what therapists have to do in order to get accredited by them. There is also something to be said here about uh, therapists on placement or in training. 
It's absolutely appropriate that you see these therapists as well, even though they're not fully accredited yet. If they're going through a pretty scrupulous training program that requires placement hours, then it's okay to see that therapist as well. Now, don't get me wrong, some private clients don't want to see trainees, others don't mind it whatsoever. That's absolutely a personal choice for the client. But it is ethically and professionally appropriate that a trainee sees private clients. So don't be hindered or don't, don't be discouraged if you're a therapist or if you're going to an organization and your therapist is a trainee. The likelihood is they're still requiring, they're still obtaining a huge amount of training in the therapeutic approach that they're utilizing. So what are some of the things that you can do to ensure that you're getting the best quality therapy that you can? Well, the first thing to do is to check accreditation. Although people might not be fully qualified and can use titles like therapist, counselor, psychotherapist and psychologist, it doesn't mean that they're accredited. Bodies such as the UKCP, BACP, HCPC and the BPS are all governing bodies that recognize fully qualified therapists and psychologists. So make sure to check in with the, the therapist's website. Sometimes what they'll have is they'll have little emblems, they'll have little logos at the bottom. If they've got those logos then legally, you know, they have to be accredited. They can't put those logos on if they're not accredited. So you may come across a website where somebody's calling themselves a counselor, for example, and they don't have that logo. They're actually not breaking any laws. They're not doing anything legally wrong. They might be doing something morally and ethically wrong. It maybe speaks to the fact that this therapist is not fully qualified and definitely is not accredited. You can also check in with these governing bodies. So you can contact those governing bodies and see if that therapist that you're utilizing is on their books. If they're not, then you maybe want to question if that therapist is fully qualified. The other thing that you can do is to see a therapist with a legally protected title. Now, I know I went into some detail and said, you know, therapist, counselor, psychotherapist, uh, psychologist are all not protected titles. That means anybody can call themselves that. It's something that really, in my opinion, needs to change. But there are some titles that are legally protected. For example, somebody cannot call themselves a doctor of psychology. Somebody can't call themselves a counseling psychologist, a clinical psychologist or health or sports and exercise or occupational psychologist if they are not fully accredited. HCPC is the governing body for all psychologists. Now, they're very scrupulous in, in who they admit and it has to be a case where that person has a full doctorate in psychology in order to be accredited by that governing body. So those are the titles that are legally protected. Not everybody can call themselves that on a legal ground. So if you're seeing a therapist with one of those titles, then you're definitely seeing a fully qualified therapist. Okay guys, on today's episode of Get Psych, we've been taking a look at unqualified, unaccredited, qualified and accredited therapists and how to spot the difference and what you can do to ensure that you're getting the best quality therapy that you can. Guys, if you've been enjoying this week's episode of Get Psych, then make sure to hit that like button. You can comment and share the videos as well. And if you've been enjoying Get Psyched as a whole, you can hit that little subscribe button. You can hit the bell next to the subscribe button and you'll get weekly reminders of every time I upload. Thanks so much for watching this week's episode, guys, and hopefully catch you next week.